Good morning, welcome to the Finley River Cowboy Church. Howdy. 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 Good. When you're delightful and you help, when you help, truly I say to you, and you see help with your see, with your on your on your Jesus wearing on your sandals, when is only wearing on your feet, yes. and then when your tails of God's faith. Truly, I say to you, and when you help, it is in you anywhere possible. Yes. When you help, it is in you for you tells for you guides of the Holy Spirit. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Happy Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, we thank you, Father, for the any blessings. We're precious to the hand in hand in the heavenly Father. When is he being given for a chocolate milk or an apple juice <laughs> or donuts? Yes, Lord. Or it is for these for allowing us to play today. And you con is for a family river cowboy church. Yes. And when we telling us somebody and you for you con send us all for you, chasing you, getting you so busy, keeping us safe for you. Only God, for the Holy Spirit, for you. Amen. Amen. Lord, we come to you, and we help for you. Tells only for cups helping for you. Help somebody helping us for the Holy Spirit, yes. for allowing us for only guys so much for keeping us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone, say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Great. It look like I got about 15 minutes to wrap this up. <laughs> Think we can do that? Amen. I don't know. <laughs> Give us the cliff notes. The cliff notes version of it. Instead of saying old man, say old me. <laughs> We're going to be talking about destiny today. How many of you understand that you have a destiny? Yes. That you were born into this world because you have a plan and a, God has a plan and you have a purpose for being here, which constitutes your destiny. Amen. We always got to start with something funny. This will be the most important part of this message. <laughs> One cold evening during the holiday season, a six-year-old boy was standing outside of a store window looking in and admiring the things in the storefront. He had the little child, six-year-old boy, had no shoes, and his clothes were just mere rags. Uh -huh. A young woman passed by and saw the young man and could read the longing in the, his pale blue eyes. She took the child by the hand and led him into the store, and then she brought him, bought him some new shoes and bought him some new clo warm clothes. Yeah. And they came back outside, and the woman said to the boy, she said, now you go home, and you have a happy holiday. And the young boy looked up at her and asked her, ma'am, are you God? And the woman smiled and, and replied, no, son, I'm just one of his children. And the little boy said this, I knew you had to be of some relation." Oh. 
Got a wonderful story. Yeah. It's funny when you think about it, but it's true. Amen. We are one of His children. That's yeah. right. And we can make a difference, whether it's in the life of the person sitting next to you or the person staring at you in the mirror. Yes. yes. We can make a difference. Yes. Amen. We all have a destiny. We're all here for a purpose. Mike Mayfield was destined, born in 1969, February the 14th, was destined to be the pastor at Finley River Cowboy Church, regardless of what people say and what they know about my life. Amen. Mike had a destiny to be here. It is important for every Christian to truly know that we've been born again and to know that we have been born again with a purpose in mind. Amen. God has a destiny for each one of us to fulfill. Yes, God. How many of you are breathing today? Everybody raise their hand unless you're passed out. <laughs> Everybody in this room has a destiny. Well, I don't know what mine is. Spend time in God's Word. Spend time praying. Yes, Lord. And God will open to you your destiny. Amen. Amen. God just wants you to live. Yes. We get so caught up in what do I need to do here? What do I need to do there? God just wants you to live. Yes. And bring in, in into being in somebody else's life what you've learned in your walk with God. Yes. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1 or verse 11 says... Also, that we have obtained an inheritance. You hear talk about the inheritance a lot. You have an inheritance. But it doesn't come when Jesus comes back. You have it in the here and now. Yes. Amen. Having been predestined according to His purpose, who works all things after the counsel of His will. God has a purpose for you. He has a plan for your life. And He wrote your story before He ever spoke the world into existence. Amen. You're here because of that purpose. Yes. yes. It was you were destined to be in this room on this very day. Yes. Because God wrote it and ordained it to happen. Second yes. Timothy one nine says, Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was granted to us in Christ Jesus from all, for all eternity. Yes. Yes. God has a plan, has a purpose, and we need to be stepping into the people that God has called us to be. Amen. Amen. Because God sees you as that person already. How many of you look in the mirror and see something that you like looking back at you? Sometimes we we do, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we have to put a comb to it to make it look a little better. <laughs> but that's the thing, is that we, we look in the mirror and we have a different reaction every time we look in the mirror. Sometimes we like ourselves. Sometimes we don't. And I'm going to tell you something. God likes you. All That's time. right. All the time. All the time. Yes. And God loves you every moment of every day. Yes. The emphasis of this message, I'm going to break it into two parts. So this, this is going to be a four-message series, but this message is going to be broken into two parts. The emphasis of the mes this message will be on coming to understand that God is always at work in our lives and to bring us to a place where we can discover and capture the destiny that He has marked us out for each one of us. Jeremiah 1.5. How many, how many of you know Jeremiah 29.11? I know the purpose and the plan. Jeremiah 1.5 says this, Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you, and I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. Amen. Now, people can argue and say that this was written specifically for Jeremiah, but I'm going to tell you it's written for you. Yes. Because every word in God's Word is a love letter to you, and He wants you to know how much He loves you. Yes. He wants you to know how much He cares for you. He wants you to know that in spite of the pain that you're going through, God is going to work something good out of that pain. Yeah. Yes. We've all been through tough times. But that's part of our destiny is that you go through a tough time so that you're able to minister life to somebody else. Amen. That's right. We may not all be called to be prophets or pastors or preachers or leaders in churches, but we're all a preacher of some sort. That's right. 
God has called us to preach the gospel to the nations. To tell people about Jesus. How can I do that? I don't have a pulpit to stand behind. You have a life to live. That's right. And let that life reflect what you know about God. Yes. And let's quit putting him in a box. Amen. This is why it is so important for us to be at peace with the person God has created us to be. You have to be at peace with you before you can be at peace with anybody else. Yes. You have to be at peace with you before you can be at peace with anybody else. Am I at peace with me? Then I can be at peace with others. Yes. Am I not? If I'm not at peace with me, and there's no way that you can be peaceful with other people. Part of that being at peace with yourself is coming to know who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's right. First Peter one two says, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. By the sanctifying of the Spirit to obey Christ and the sprinkling with His blood, may grace and peace be yours in the fullest measure. Wow. Isn't that a good passage? That's something we ought to be saying, I want that in my life. You already have it. We just have to step into it. The point I really want to drive home in this message is that there are Defining moments in our lives where God allows us to see things from His perspective concerning our lives. It is at these moments that we are called to come into agreement with His purpose and calling by committing ourselves wholeheartedly to what He is desiring for us to do. God has a plan. God has a purpose. I don't know where this country's headed right now. That's right. We're headed into some dark times if things don't change. But God has a plan. Amen. Amen. You know, we can we can always say something negative, but we can always come around that and say, but God. Yes. But God. But God demonstrated his own love towards Mike that in while I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. Aren't you glad Jesus died for you? Yes. Aren't you glad that He loves you that much? Yes. The Bible tells us that no man loves anybody any more than a man that lays down his life for his friends. We have a response to this, and our response should be come from Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, what do we do when we see a therefore in Scripture? Find out, Find out what it's there for. Go back and read the, the latter part of chapter 11 of the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, yeah. acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. How many of you understand that you are acceptable to God? You are accepted. You are God's beloved child. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And it's nothing that you've done to obtain that. It's because you said, yes, I will follow Jesus. That's right. I choose to accept what he did for me on the cross. And that has become yours. That's who you are. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing or the metaneo, the changing of our mind, so that you may prove what is the will of God is. And which is good and acceptable and perfect. God's will is good, it's acceptable, and it's perfect. Amen. God's will is good, it's acceptable, and it's perfect. Amen. Ain't that good? Amen. Yes. Does that excite you? Yes. yes. Does that light the fire inside of you? Yes. Does that want make you want to tell somebody about Jesus? Yes. Yes. It ought to. Our plans and our decisions in life should now begin to evolve around the destiny God has ordained for our lives. God has brought me to this place in my life, and I'm here. I'm standing in this pulpit talking to you about my favorite person in the whole world. Amen. Jesus. Amen. How many of you looked in the mirror this morning? No. Ladies, you did a very good job. <laughs> but as beautiful as you ladies are, your must more beauty comes from the inside because of what God has done for you. Amen. And you need to work on some things. My little comb your hair to the, a little more. 
<laughs> we're 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 not. Yeah, I won't go there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Matthew eleven twelve. I'm going to read this from two versions of the Bible. I'm going to read it from the NIV. And I'm going to read it from my favorite uh, version of the Bible, which is the NASB. If you heard me say that, that's the New American Standard Bible. The NIV says, Matthew 11, 12, For the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing, and forceful men lay hold of it. Now I'm going to read it in the Nazbi, and it says this, For the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom suffers violence, and violent men take it by force. What does this mean? That means we got to get ugly. we got to start punching people in the mouth and making noses bleed and stuff like that in order to tell people about Jesus. Is that right? No. no. Not, that's not all. It's a, it, these are poor translations of what Scripture says. How many of you understand that the, the word for violent and passionate are synonymous? There's a difference between punching somebody in the mouth and, and throwing your arm around somebody and loving them up. But this same um, verbiage that happened here in this passage was translated poorly. It should read, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers passion. And passionate men take it by force. Yes. We have to have a passion for what we're doing. We have to have a zeal. We've talked about the cloak of zeal in, in the study of the armor of God on Tuesday nights. I preached a sermon two Sundays in a row about the, pa the passion or the zeal. If we're not zealous for God's word, if we're not zealous for what God has done for us, our destiny is just laying out there idle. That's right. God wants to be us to be passionate about things. You know, if I pour gasoline in the car and I crank it up and it'll it'll run, it'll take you places. Your passion will take you places in your walk with God. Amen. Amen. The story of David in First Samuel. How many of you are following the daily ride? How many enjoy First Samuel? It's a different flow pattern. To the way we've we've carried things in Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians, those books of the New Testament. But this is here later on when we get to chapter 17, this is what we're going to be talking about. Samuel 17, 20 through 26, we find the story of David and Goliath. It's a beautiful illustration of someone who is able to force lay hold of his destiny and when he got a glimpse of God's perspective and purpose at a defining moment in his life. 1 yeah. Samuel 17 26 and it says this Then David spoke to the men who were standing by him. Now these men were men that had been in battle had faced things in their life had, had walked up to somebody and hit them with a sword and killed them. And these men were had armor on and they were scared to death. I'm not very tall. I'm almost 5'10". But this Goliath stood twice as tall as me. Almost 12 feet tall. And I'm going to tell you, I would be scared too. But David was a 15, 16 year old boy that went out here and said, What are you guys quaking in your armor? Why are you scared? We have God on our side. The Bible tells us if God be for us, who can be against us? God be for us, who can be against us? And David walked out there and took the life down. Then David spoke to the men who were standing with him, saying, What will we will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? that he should taunt the armies of the living God. We have an enemy that's running rampant today. And right. he's standing there taunting you. He looks at you in the mirror a lot of times. He looks at you from across the fence from your neighbor's house. Yes. And he taunts you. And he brings us to fear. The Bible tells us, do not fear. And it's time for we as Christians to quit Quit standing there and taking it and hit our knees and let God defend us. Amen. Amen. Yes. 
There's too much going on. There's too much pain in this world. There's too much pain sitting in this room. God loves you. Amen. As a result of seeing God's from God's perspective and purpose, David's heart was filled with faith as he begins to forcefully or passionately take action. Sometimes people just need to stand up and take action. You know? And it's okay for you to say amen. It's okay if you wanted to say hallelujah. It's okay if you want to jump up and scream and give God the glory. Because this is the God we serve. Yes. That's right. And it's worth getting excited about. Amen. David's declaration of faith comes in second or first Samuel seventeen, thirty-four and through thirty-seven. But I want to focus on verse 36. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. How many of you could go out and by hand kill a lion or a bear? David did it. Your servant has killed both. And David here is talking to Saul. And this uncircumcised Philistine, this person who does not have God on his side, this person that does not know our God. This, this person who has not experienced our God is about to experience it. Yes. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them since he has taunted the armies of the living God. David says, we don't need to stand here and take this. We need to take action. Amen. Amen. And Saul said, okay, let me put my armor on you. <laughs> Can you imagine a 15, 16 year old boy standing there and David, Saul was tall. And Scott's pretty tall. And they wanted a king who stood head and shoulders above everybody else. Saul was a very tall man. And he said, here, put my armor on. David's like, I can't wear this. I can't move in it. God can't use me in this. Yes. This is your armor. I'm standing in his. That's right. Amen. Yeah, Amen. So David took it off and he he grabbed his he grabbed his what do you call it thing? Sling. Sling. Oh yeah. Slain shot. Slain shot. So I went down and picked up five stones out of the brook. Brenda, you've been there, that brook. Matter of fact, you got a stone just like what David would have picked up. David picked up five stones. You might know the significance of the number five. Number of grace. David picked up five stones, one for Goliath and one for his four brothers, because Goliath had four brothers just as big as he was. David said, I'm going to take them all out. Right. I've got God on my side. How many times have we stood face to face with the enemy? How many times have we stood face to face with a circumstance or a situation or, or a tough time and the enemy's taunting us, saying, You can't do this? We need to remember. We need to speak God's word. Yes. I wrote that this morning. We need to, and yesterday, we need to speak God's word. Amen. God's word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What does the word all mean? Everything. Everything. It's everything, right? Everything. Question number one, and I want to ask you this morning, is where have you been? The Bible commands us to remember the biblical pattern of theology of remembrance comes in Deuteronomy chapter 8 Psalm 106 and the Old Testament feasts God wants us to remember where have you been it's a big picture overview a significant people, events circumstances, relationships, jobs schooling, locations churches, mentors, family if, I could, if you could determine lessons and patterns from your development, these experiences could provide keys to unlocking your unique and ultimate con contribution. The future is best informed by the past, providing great, greater certainty and hope. Our hope is in Jesus. Amen. He's promised never to leave us or forsake us. And sometimes we forget that, don't we? That's yeah. right. We need to remember that. <clears throat> Step one is to brainstorm people, events, circumstances. Two, brainstorm uh, struggles, negative, painful things. 
brainstorm, order chronology, and from top to bottom. But it all brings us to lessons, and what we do with those lessons determines the outcome of where we're going. Lessons from the past are signposts that point to the future. How many of you know you got a future and a hope? Amen. That comes from Jesus. Romans 1.17 says, For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the righteous man shall live by faith. How many righteous men do we have in here? Raise your hand. Raise your That's hand. Right. Raise your hand. You are the righteous. If, you're, if you've chosen to follow Jesus, you are righteous. Amen. And it's not because of you, but because of what Jesus did. It's because he is giving you his righteousness. Amen. And when God looks at you, that's what he sees. Yes. And that's what we need to start seeing when we look in the mirror. Amen. That's right. Amen. Dustin, this is where I'm going to close. David was able to secure his future by taking necessary action. The events and lessons of your past have not only been God's tools for shaping your life, but they are guideposts that inform your future. Yes. Vision is a word picture that captures the future from God's perspective. We've got to look at our lives through the lens of God's eyes. Yes. James 2, 17 and 18 says, Even so faith, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. But someone may say to you, I have faith and I, and I have works. Let me show you my faith without my works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Doesn't mean that we work ourselves to heaven. It doesn't mean that God's pleased with our works. God's pleased with your faith. They're stepping out in faith and showing action because faith is an action word. Yes. Amen. 1 Samuel 17, 45 and 46. Again, we're talking about the story of David. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you taunted. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down. And I will remove your head. And I will give your bodies to the armies of the Philistines this day, to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Amen. Amen. When you understand the life and ministry God has created you for, you gain the ability and confidence to live, grow, and minister intentionally, just as David did. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the power of your word. We're thankful, Father, that you give us a, a destiny and a hope. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you have chosen each one of us yes, Lord. for the life that we live. Thank you, Father. You have given us everything that pertains to life and godliness, and we stand in your power. Yes, Lord. The enemy has no more power. He has no more room to give us fear because we will not fear. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We're going to take back what you, the enemy has stolen from us, and that you have given us, Father. We want that love. We want that peace. We want that hope that you have given us because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did. Thank you for those that are here. Thank you for those that are watching by Facebook. I pray blessings upon them, each person in this room, and those that are watching. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless and keep you. May His face shine upon you. May He give you peace. May He lift up His countenance upon you and you be at peace. It's in Jesus' name that we stand. You receive that word today. Amen. Amen. Amen.